High School Football, where Chevrolet presents Friday Night Lights on CBS 13 News. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to week six of Quirk Chevrolet's Friday Night Lights. Alongside my partner, Adam Epstein, I'm Dave Eden. Adam, every game this time of year is huge, but especially when you have two undefeated teams going head-to-head. -head. Yeah, it's extra special, and that's right, Dave. A huge crowd in Brunswick tonight as well for the showdown that everyone's been talking about. Of course, we're talking about Brewer in Brunswick, our FNL Game of the Week. Uh, the uh, Dragons ranked third, taking on the fifth rank, which is third quarter. Brunswick pitching a shutout up 36 zip. Brewer trying to get back in it. Jack Corey, a nice 24 yard run a few plays later, and that would lead to Trey Woods' three yard touchdown run, which is on the board down 36 to 6. Fourth quarter now, Dragons ball. Christian Jensen, a beautiful pass to Ben Palazzi, 36 yards. Uh, later in the drive now, Jesse Devereaux with a uh, Nice 17-yard run, moving the chains. Dragons in complete control. Two plays later, missed a touchdown. Jesse Devereaux with a three-yard touchdown run as Brunswick cruises to a 42-12 win. The Dragons are atop the Class B North with a perfect 6-0 record. Our next stop takes us to Bath. The Morse Shipbuilders taking on 4-1 Falmouth. First quarter, Falmouth QB Jack Bryant so dangerous on the run. Breaking several tackles, uh, takes it to 15 yards for the first down. Two plays later, and Bryant going to the air. Brock Welch is open for the touchdown. 32-yard uh, strike, 6-0 Yachtsman. Second quarter again, Falmouth on the move. Bryant finding Garrett Obi for 20 yards. Uh, nice pickup here, and a few plays later, uh, Jack decides to keep it himself. Why not? As he uh, goes in from uh, 15 yards out, Falmouth wins it 25 to 8 and goes to 5 and 1 on the season. Elsewhere tonight, the undefeated and second ranked Bonnie Eagle Scots traveling to Wyndham to take on the Eagles. First quarter, and here come the Scots. Camp the Burge uh, gets it down to the one yard line. And then on a third and goal, it's Alex Sprague taking it in. 18 7, uh, Bonnie Eagle on top. Uh, Eagles uh, trying to come back. Quarterback Desmond Leslie finding Blake Hoser for a, a big gainer. Eagles uh, would get three before the half to trail 24-10. Third quarter now, Bonnie Eagles, Cam Day to Keith Hopsis, 30 yards for the uh, touchdown as the uh, Scots would then go for two, and it would be uh, Day on the keeper. Uh, Bonnie Eagle goes to 6-0 with a 38-10 win. Time now to check in with Adam, who... Uh, I'm sure found some amazing fans in the stands tonight. Dave, thank you so much. Another great night for football. It was clear outside, cool conditions, comfortable for the players. Now let's get you over to some sights and sounds of the game, starting off in Deering, where the Rams fans were going wild, cheering for their team to score. It was 0-0 at this point. And then you also have the Oxford Hills fans on the other side. They were cheering because they just went up 7-0. And that was in the second quarter. Here are the Oxford Hills fans cheerleaders going wild, giving the sparkly pom-poms right there. And finally in Portland, you have the cheerleaders as well, bring out the bing guns. Look at the little girls in front there. They're enjoying themselves, having a great time. So everyone was out enjoying the weather and the football today. And Dave, we have some more highlights and scores to get to you. I'll send it back on over to you. We certainly do, sir. Thanks so much. Continuing on with the Red Hot Portland Bulldogs hosting Lewiston tonight. The Bulldogs proudly wearing a green uh, stripe tonight in memory of Griffin Foley's dad, who recently lost his battle to cancer. Our thoughts and prayers with uh, Griffin's family. First quarter, Isaiah Batchelder threading the needle to who else? Griffin Foley calls it in for an emotional touchdown. Bulldogs up 13-0 after the PAT. Second quarter again, and it's Batchelder. The perfect strike to Griffin Foley. Hauls in his second touchdown of the game and uh, points to the sky in celebration. Quite a moment as uh, the Bulldogs go on to win it 34-13. We head to uh, Deering. The Rams hosting Oxford Hills in Buckfield. No score in the first. Vikings on the move. They try a little razzle-dazzle flea flicker that uh, gets uh, picked off by Keegan Stanton. A tremendous defensive play. Uh, Vikings D also uh, bringing the heat tonight. Parker LaFrance and 
Tasker Winslow in on the hit. Second quarter now, Rams on the move. Uh, uh, Vikings cause a fumble here. Adrian Ray uh, recovers the uh, football. Oxford Hills uh, back in business. Uh, Dawson Stevens with the uh, terrific run around the end here, taking it inside the two-yard line. The very next play, Ryland Van Decker is going to take it in. Vikings up 7-0 after the PAT as Oxford Hills Buckfield earns a hard-fought 14-0 road win over Deering. We head to South Portland. The Red Riots uh, taking on Scarborough tonight. Red Riots down 21-0 in the second, trying to get something going. But Matt Crockett gets picked off by Cody Dudley. A fantastic interception right there. Red Storm on offense now. And quarterback Zoltan Panyi with a terrific run down to the one-yard line. And that would lead to this Panyi touchdown. Red Storm pouring it on. Third quarter now. And Owen Garrard, as he's done so many times this season, takes it in for the uh, touchdown. As Scarborough goes to four and two with a 38 to six win, and we are delighted to have uh, Coach Lance Johnson and members of the Scarborough Red Storm live in studio tonight. Let's send it back over to Adam. Dave, thank you so much, and it's a pleasure to have the Scarborough team here, joined by Coach Johnson and a lot of the players. Thanks for coming in tonight, guys. Now, Coach. What do you expect to get out of the season? What are your goals moving forward? Well, our goals are to keep, keep improving the next couple weeks and uh, get ready for the playoffs, and we think we can, we can play with anybody when the playoffs come, come, comes. And talking about playoffs, you guys will be there, and that must feel great. Now, we've got Dakota J right here. He is a left tackle, and next to him we have Anthony Griffin, a right tackle. That's the offensive line. Now, these guys are often the unsung hero. We saw those highlights of your team scoring with run plays, but it's you guys that are really allowing them to score. So how do you guys feel uh, being such a strong part of this team? How important is it to have a strong offensive line? Uh, it's extremely important. Um, past couple of years, um, we haven't been able to get too much going in the run game. But this year, um, we've been pounding it on, you know, um, so it helps a lot. Awesome. And Anthony, you have anything to say? Yeah, and it really helps having like a running back like OG. So we don't have to worry. Even if we make a mistake, we're like, we don't have to be nervous, really, like, because we have OG. So. Right, you guys have a strong team. Everyone works together, does their job, and good luck in the playoffs, fellas. Thanks. And good luck next week as well. Dave, I'll send it back on over to you. Uh, I, I knew the first time I saw Scarborough this year, I'm like, that is a very big football team, a very skilled football <laughs> Look team. At these guys. We certainly wish the Red Storm nothing but the best. Still to come on Quirk Chevrolet's Friday Night Lights, undefeated Cape hosting Gray New Gloucester tonight. The big early scores that pace the Capers. Plus, fresh off the Anybody? School Spirit Challenge, the Madison Bulldogs traveling to MDI with first place on the line, the great start and tough finish when Quirk Chevrolet's Friday Night Lights continues right after this. Welcome back to Quirk Chevrolet's Friday Night Lights. Time now to check out some of tomorrow's games and how the weather will be looking at kickoff. And once again, we luck out. There are a few football games tomorrow in Southern Maine in York County. We have Massabesic traveling to Saco to take on Thornton Academy. Temperatures in the low 60s, clouds building throughout the day. And right here by Portland, we have Mount Valley going to Freeport and Bangor at Cheveris with temperatures in the mid and upper 60s, partly sunny. A little bit further to the north, we have one game on the map. That's Oak Hill at Lisbon. Game time temperature 66 degrees. You'll see some sun and mainly cloudy conditions, especially later on in the day. But once again, another comfortable day for football. Dave, what other scores and highlights are coming our way? All right. Well, I'll tell you, we've been spoiled with the weather so far. Thanks so much, Adam. Undefeated Cape Elizabeth ranked ninth in our latest poll, hosting Gray New Gloucester tonight. Early in the first, Cape QB, uh, Jeb uh, Bochenstein finds uh, Marshall Peterson for the uh, touchdown. Six nothing, Capers, just like that. Still in the first half. Keep your eyes on number 26, Camden Turner, who turns on the Jets and takes it in for a long, Touchdown run. He's still running 13 nothing capers at that point. Cape goes on to win it 57 to nothing. Capers are now 6 and 0. Oh. And our final stop takes us to MDI. The Trojans hosting undefeated Madison. Uh, Madison down 6 nothing early. Back come the Bulldogs. Sean Whalen punches it in. Uh, Bulldogs up 7 6. And then just before halftime, 
It's uh, Wayland again running in another score. However, MDI would stun the Bulldogs tonight, winning 20 to 19. Both teams are now five and one on the season. The School Spirit Challenge, sponsored by Shads, Quirk, Austin and Sons, and KVCC. Well, Madison High School letting the Bulldogs out bright and early this morning for our School Spirit Challenge. The football team showed off why they're undefeated, and the cheerleaders went from the sidelines to center stage. Check after check, Adam uh, rolled in, adding up to nearly uh, $5,000 for the Good Shepherd Food Bank. Outside students uh, stuffed the bus with thousands of pounds of food. And the students collected nearly $1,000 for a chance to pour crushed tomatoes <laughs> on the heads of two of their favorite teachers. That is something else. Uh, in case you missed it, Red Sox lose game two to Cleveland, six to nothing. They trail 2 0 in that series. What are you going to do? We'll be at Fenway Park uh, live on Sunday for game three. Hopefully, the Sox can force a game four. Hopefully, but right? Another big night of high school football. That's going to do it for another edition of Court Chevrolet's Friday Night Lights for Adam and the entire CBS 13 news team. I'm David. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great, safe weekend, everyone.